going on, everybody? Uh, that moan just, uh, it's perfect. It's mwah. March 1st. We are finally into March. It's March. Take a deep breath. Here we go. That's a, a classic um, classic line from, uh, uh, God, my mind is not working. One shining moment. Uh, maybe the year Carolina won it in the early 2000s. I don't know. Like the McCants years? I don't know. Anyway, uh, four games slate tonight. Thursday, not very eventful. Um, just going to hop in and plow through it, running a little short on time. Um, so let's just dig in. Uh, first up, we have the Heat uh, hosting the Lakers. 109.75 implied total for the Heat is third. They're four-point favorites at home. And uh, in my opinion, the, they have the best matchup um, on the slate today. I would have said the Sixers do, but again, Cleveland's defense is still a little fresh. So while I think they're bad, I prefer the Lakers' uh, awfulness. Uh, so Josh Richardson is 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Uh, big takeaway for the Heat is that uh, Wayne Ellington is going to be out. So we should see a couple extra minutes for Rodney Magruder, uh, a couple extra minutes for um, probably Dwayne Wade, just a couple extra minutes to go around uh, on the wing. I think uh, Richardson looks great. Uh, you're looking for, you know, 30. This is a guy that can get up to 35. He had a 48-point game. He had a 47-point game before the break. Tons of upside. Uh, I think Josh Richardson looks like a great play in um, in cash or GPPs. And uh, as crazy as it sounds, we don't do it often, but we're leading off with a two. Um, Dragic also looking exceptional on FanDuel. 6,700. Um so, you know, the, the baseline there is like 33, which he put up uh, two nights ago. But again, he had a 44-point game before the break, 55-point game uh, a couple nights ago. Um, again, cash or GPP, I think they're both in great spots. You're going to need a ton of either one of them just because of the slate. Um, Dragic, also a 2 on FanDuel. He's a 3 on DK. Um that price of 7400 is dramatically higher, so you can't just can't go too crazy there. But 6700 is comically low. Uh, Whiteside is 7700 on FanDuel, 8000 on DK. Man, FanDuel really wants you to play the Heat. <laughs> 8000 on DK. Um, so you know, 40 is the baseline. We've seen him do that uh, twice so far in the past three week stretch. Lots of mid-30s games. Um, got up to 48 against Embiid uh, two nights ago. I like Whiteside uh, a ton. I don't want to go all the way to two for Whiteside because I think he's a little bit scarier. Uh, so he's actually going to be a three for me on FanDuel and a four for me on DK. Again, that DK price is just a little prohibitive. Tyler Johnson is at 5,000 on both sites. Um, he's the first guy I'm not going crazy over, but you know has the ability to get into the mid 30s to 35-ish point games, which would be you know pretty huge for a night like tonight. Um, he's just a straight three for me. Now Wade is really interesting. 4,600 on Fanduel. You have to assume that. Um, He's going to see a little bit of extra run with uh, with Ellington out. You know, I know he's been closing games, so that, that sort of fits for him. Coming off a day's rest, so we don't have to worry about any sort of back-to-back -back for him right now. Uh, 4,600 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. You know, the baseline's going to be 23. He had 39 two nights ago. Um, so I think this looks like a relatively safe play with a, a bundle of upside. Um, could easily get into like the 30, 32, 33 range and, and bring back a lot of value. So I'm going to say that Dwayne Wade is also a 2 on FanDuel. Uh, I'm loving the heat tonight. Um, 
I'm going to say that he's a three on DraftKings, but he's close. Wade is just in a really, like, it's just a really good spot. Um, Kelly Olynyk, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Got 25 minutes in his uh, first game back from injury, which is interesting. Um, they shaved down Bam's minutes down to seven. So Olynyk can be really efficient in that sort of time. Uh, he's going to be a three for me just because of his role. But I like him as some differentiation at power forward. And uh, I would say that James Johnson is a four. I don't think that you can go too crazy over him. But the Heat look great. We'll go to the Lakers. Uh, Lakers, 105.75 implied total, which is last. You can see that uh, a lot of these teams are just packed in the same area uh, for implied total. But the Heat, you know, exceptional defensively, real tough matchup for the Lakers. It's going to be hard to convince me that um, there's too much value here. KCP is 6,600. He's 6,200 on DK. I'm going to move that to the Lakers. Um, yeah, he's, he's dialed it up. He's had two games in the mid-40s recently. Uh, he's a guy that can go off. Let's take a look and see what the Heat defense looks like without Ellington. Because you would think it would get a little bit better. It's not as if Wayne Ellington has ever been known as uh, some sort of defensive lockdown guy. So that could be a little interesting. Obviously they have Wade now, so the defense should be worse on that end. But they're uh, 106.1 points per possession overall 72nd percentile when wayne ellington is not on the floor what does their defense do 33 and 72 okay so it's largely the same defensively which doesn't bode well for the lakers it's just that their offense falls off a cliff so i have no problem using kcp tonight i think there's sufficient upside you know these two games into the mid-40s, uh, you'd be more than happy with. Um, I also think that he's relatively safe in cash. Uh, it's interesting. Brandon Ingram, 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Man, he's been playing interest. Like, he's been playing well. I don't... 51 in his last game. Um... His baseline is 37. He only had two games above that mark in his past three weeks. Um, both of those have happened in the last five or six days. I don't like this matchup for him. I think it's tricky. Uh, the only saving grace is that he could get a couple extra shots in the mid-range. Um, but for me, Ingram is a four. I'm not Brandon Ingram, but I'm not a I'm not a big fan there tonight. I think that price is just a a bit too high. Julius Randle, seventy seven hundred on Fanduel, seventy five hundred on DK. Um, you know he's had a couple games in the forties, which is what you need, but he hasn't had any like just blow up games. I'd prefer him more in cash than in GPPs, so for me, he's just a four. <sighs> Isaiah, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. His baseline's going to be 27. Um, he's had two 29-point games. He stands out in my numbers. I've tried to ding him down a little bit. Um... Based on his weighted points per minute from just this year, he should be more at 26. Uh, I think that's probably a bit more realistic, but I like to present the raw number regardless. I can't say that Isaiah is anything more than a four. Um, I just don't trust him. He's not the same person right now. Honestly, I'm surprised they don't shut him down, although I guess probably Isaiah would freak out about that being in a contract year and all, but every game that he plays is just making him look 
worse and worse and a shadow of the guy that was uh you know an mvp candidate last year which is a shame his con i mean his contract is going to be one of the more interesting subplots this year i assume it's probably going to be like a, a one plus one you know make good type deal he'll end up in i don't know somewhere that needs a point guard that is hoping for a lottery ticket what would be a good spot for him? Um, I don't even know. Nothing Nothing even jumps out at me off the top of my head. He's been on so many of these teams. I was like, oh, the Suns. No, he's not going back there. Now they have Vilfer Payton. Who knows? Lonzo. 6,600 on FanDuel. 6,400 on DK. Um, he's been back for two games. Minutes have been a little low. Uh, I think it's going to be a bit of a boost here. Um, you're looking for 33 as a baseline. He put up 36 in 24 minutes. I think he's a pretty solid value. Uh, just a three, though. Um, the heater, again, not my favorite matchup. Um, I don't have any interest in Kuzma. Uh, although before the break, he did have a 38-pointer and a 39-pointer, which would be okay value or you know solid value for him at this price um i guess i probably need to say that he's a four and then brooke lopez is back down into his low 20 minutes um so there's not a ton of upside there any longer I'll go to cleveland uh calves 113 implied total is first they are three and a half point favorites at home against the sixers uh I think this is a pretty tough matchup for Cleveland. But we'll start with LeBron. He is 12-2 on FanDuel and 11-9 on DK. Um, I mean, he's kind of the only thing out there at small forward. The There's a, what, $4,800 drop between LeBron and, uh, and Brandon Ingram. And there's not exactly a lot else there to like at small forward. So I think you need to like LeBron a little bit by default. But it's a tricky matchup. You know, you need well over 60 to be happy. Or you need at least 60 to be happy. And um, he might just be like a function of the slate tonight. I'm going to say that LeBron is a three. Um... On a bigger slate, I'd be a little nervous about it. But on a four-game slate like this, I'd have a hard time getting away from him too much. Mostly because the alternatives are like Alan Crabb or, you know, Bielitsa, Justin Jackson. These are like, There's not a lot of uh, other guys out there breeding um, excitement. George Hill, coming off the monster 45-point game uh, two nights ago, is 5,100 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Um, he's had two big games since coming to Cleveland. This doesn't seem like it's going to be one that follows suit. I'd like to see. I assume he's near the bottom in uh, best spots today, but I could be wrong. He's 27th. Uh, the Sixers have given up nine duds at point guard this year. Um, so for me, George Hill is a four. I don't expect that uh, the big 45-pointer to continue. JR, just not good recently. Eight fantasy points, two and a half, 12. Um... Look, he's a, G he's a GPP guy and a minimal one at that. Um, I will have him in basically one lineup, if that. Now, Rodney Hood is a little interesting. We haven't seen him go completely bananas yet. That might be just a function of minutes to start. But now, these past two games, 28 minutes and then 31 minutes. Um, he's priced at 4400 on FanDuel, uh, 4400 on DK does take a ton of shots at the mid-range, which uh, fits pretty well here. 
Um, I think this there's a little bit of upside in Hood if he goes on a bit of a heater, which he can do. Um, he doesn't show up here. So what's who's the small forward representative? Is it Chetty? Yeah. Seven duds um, for small forwards against the Sixers. If we're calling Hood a small forward, if we call him a shooting guard, it's... Where's JR? Seven duds against shooting guard as well. Um, it's not a great spot, I don't think, but Rodney Hood's price and his upside on a four-game slate is there. I'm, I'm going to say he's a three. It's not that I'll be crazy on him, but uh, there are scenarios where that looks like a solid play. Uh, Kyle Korver, Tristan Thompson, Jordan Clarkson, none of these guys are really um, super interesting to me. I don't, I don't really like the Cavs, so I'd rather go to Philly. Philly with a 109.5 implied total, which is fourth. Um, I like this spot. What happened the last time they played? I remember thinking, did Embiid like have a rough night? Yeah, I remember thinking somebody went ham on Cleveland like the night before that. Maybe, oh, I wish I could remember who it was. I mean, a lot of people have, but um, this stands out as a really good spot. I assume Embiid is near the top here. Yeah, he's eight. well, 18th. Okay, so the Cavs have been relatively indifferent. Only three big games, two monster games. Um, they just kind of give up um, average games against uh, centers. But we'll start with Ben Simmons first, who I don't have a ton of interest in. Simmons is 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Um, you know, you need like 47 points just to begin. He did have a 55-pointer and a 60-pointer, but, I mean, even that, like the 55, like you're happy, but I don't see a ton of upside in Simmons. Did he go off in that game? Is that what I'm remembering? No, he played like shit in both of them, too. Yeah, I don't, I don't like Ben Simmons at that price. I think he's comically overpriced. Um, I hate using the fade term, but... I'm right as of right now I will have a very 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 small amount of Ben Simmons. I oh man, power forward is just a wasteland. Getting that right will be um that'll be the key to everything tonight. So Dario Saric is 7,100 on FanDuel and 6,500 on DK. Um, so 35 is that baseline. He's only hit 35 once in the last three weeks. That's kind of terrifying. Uh, I have to say that he's a four as well. Um, you know, if you're trying to get to six, you know, if you need him to get to 42 plus here. That seems like a tall order. I know Cleveland's not the best, but defensively that is. Embiid is 10-5 on FanDuel, 10,000 on DK. Um, he had the 60-pointer before the break and the 73-pointer in the first game right after the break. Those are the sorts of games you need out of him tonight. Um, there's some other stuff to like at center with Towns and Whiteside, um, Nurkic, Willie Cauley-Stein. But it feels like Embiid is in a really solid spot. What's Cleveland's rating been with Tristan Thompson on the floor? I know this is going to be a lot of the old guard, but I just want to see how that sort of works for Tristan. So they are 20th percentile in defense when Tristan is on. You would expect that to jump up a lot, but I feel like he's been bad. Yeah, they've been worse with Tristan Thompson on the floor. 
just something to keep in mind because he's not the same person he was. Um, I think Embiid looks like a great spot to pay up tonight. Uh, I'm going to say I, I really like him. I, I think that he's a two. Now, JJ, tough shooting night. Um, he did put up 36, but... Uh, yeah, 36. He did put up 23, so he got there in volume. But uh, he had a, a pretty rough shooting night a couple nights ago. He's 4,900 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Um, so, you know, 25 is your baseline. He hasn't had any games where he's gone completely off in a, in a relatively long time. Um, 31 is his high here. If we take a look back at JJ, you know, he 34 mid January. 38 in December. You know, his ceiling is kind of like 5.5 to 6x. Uh, makes me a little nervous. So he's just a 3 for me. I do like the price, but um, you got to hope he's got a hot hand. Not much else for Reddick. 68% of his fantasy output is, it, you know, comes from points. Bobby Covington. Is 5,200 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. Same sort of threshold for Covington as Redick. You know, you're looking for 25 or 26. Um, in this last three week stretch, he's barely hit that threshold. Uh, it's been a while since Covington has had a truly big game. Um, February 3rd, he went for 37, but the rest of this is just a sea of red. It's hard to be excited about that, so I'm going to say he's a four. And then uh, Bellinelli, 4,100 on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. This game fits a little bit more for him. Uh, hasn't done anything crazy since he's come over to Philly. No games even in the 20s. Um, you would think he should have uh, a decent look against the second unit. For uh, the Cavs, Cavs do give up threes, which is you know Bellinelli's calling card. In a way, I like him more than Redick tonight. Um, so I'll say Bellinelli's a three. You just have to temper temper expectations a bit. And then finally, T.J. McConnell, uh, thirty nine hundred on Fanduel, four thousand on DK. He had 23 and 24 minutes um, two nights ago. When he gets minutes, he has the ability to just fill the stat sheet. Um, there's a ton of upside in a in a TJ McConnell 3900 number. It's a guy that could get three, four steals and be you know two thirds of the way to value without even doing anything else on the court. So, in a GPP scenario, I love him. Um, can't go too crazy, so just a four. Uh, Sacramento, 106.5 implied total is sixth. Uh, they are one point underdogs at home against the Nets. Pretty solid matchup for uh, Sacramento. Uh, just middle of the pack in terms of the eight teams, but in general, uh, it looks pretty good. De'Aaron Fox is 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Uh, this is a dude that lives in the mid-range, not much of a three-point shooter. You know, Brooklyn takes away threes a lot, so I think this game really fits Fox well. 30 would be that threshold. Um, but he hasn't had any monster games. I, I think I like him a little bit more in cash than I do in GPPs. So he's a three for me. Why can't I type today? Today. <laughs> Every day. Ugh. Bogdan is 5,400, 5,800 on DK. Um, so 27 is his baseline. Had a game at 38, had a game at 36. Uh, there's much more upside in a Bogdan line in the GPP tonight than, uh, than for Fox. I'm a little nervous about the threes. Um, it's a big reduction. He probably loses an attempt just because of uh, 
Brooklyn's defense. Wow. So, I'm going to say Bogdan is also a three. Sorry, my watch is going crazy. Uh, Buddy Heald. Nope, Willie Colley Stein. 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DraftKings. 38 would be the threshold. Got up to a 47 pointer, but that's sort of been his upside lately. Um, the good news is uh, centers eat Brooklyn's shit. <laughs> so, Willie Colley Stein is numero uno in uh, big spots today. 14 big games against the Nets. Five monsters. They have given up five duds, so there's a little bit of risk there. Uh, I think Willie Colley Stein is relatively safe in cash. Um, I don't think there's crazy, crazy upside for him. Um, but I understand having a bunch of him, and uh, for me, he's a two. It's a, it's a tricky price, but I'm willing to bet on the matchup. Buddy Heald, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. Uh, so you're looking 27 at a minimum. Did get up to 38 uh, a couple nights ago. Got up to 29 as well. Um, but that 38-point game is what you're looking for. Doesn't really do that with a, a ton of regularity, but can shoot his way there. The problem is this isn't the game to be shooting, unfortunately. Uh, heel is going to be a three just because of uh, playing the nets, but you know, use a little bit of caution. He's buddy healed. I have no interest in Justin Jackson. I do have interest in Scal. Surprise, surprise. Scal, 5,200 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. It's a great price on DK. Um, he can dial it up, um, which you're going to need. Uh, just going to be a three for me, though. And then Zebo, I can't imagine it. So let's go to Brooklyn. Nets, 107.5 implied total is fifth. Again, they're one-point favorites in Sacramento. If that gives you any sort of idea of how bad the Kings are, they are underdogs at home to the Nets, which is just, that's just lovely. So Alan Crabb is 5,200 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Um, it's a great spot for him. Nets or the Kings give up a ton of threes. Obviously, Alan Crabb, not a stranger to shooting those threes. Um, he would need, you know, 26 is the baseline. Uh, had four games in the mid to high 30s right before the break. Granted, that was without. Rondé Hollis Jefferson and Karis Levert, so you do need to be cognizant of that. He has trended down since they've been back. Uh, but the style of play is there. Um, he's going to be a three. D'Angelo Russell, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Uh, he needs like 38 as the baseline. Had a 45-pointer here. Can get into the 30s. He's going to be pretty boom and bust. But I think this is the best spot of anybody on uh, on the Nets. Uh, Russell will shoot the three. Um, he doesn't shoot it at the same sort of rate as some of the other guys on the team, but is not a stranger to it. And uh, if he can get a little bit of a uh, hot hand in him, you know, he shoots more by far than anybody else on the team. Um, and if that's the case, I'm willing to bet on the shot attempts here and say that he's a three. Um, the price is high, so it's hard for me to get to a two for him, but I'm going to probably have a decent amount of Russell. Damari Carroll, 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. Uh, this one kind of concerns me. I don't have a ton of interest here. Um, he's just a four. I feel sort of the same way about Spencer Dinwiddie, just a four. 7100 is probably a bit too expensive when they're at full strength. <laughs> Dinwiddie's been relatively quiet lately too. Um, so just a yeah, he's a 7 plus apparently. <laughs> he's an iPhone. 
Uh, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, you know, they're st him and uh, Lavert still getting their sea legs back. But I think Jefferson sees a bit more minutes here today. Um, but you need 30 plus from him. That seems like an incredible stretch. He's a four at best. I think Jaron Allen looks sneaky good. Uh, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Um, got up to uh, 39 um, a couple nights ago. He had a 46-point game right before the break. Uh, so he can accumulate those stats. So for those reasons, I'm out. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's a three for me. And I don't want anything of Cunningham, Harris, or Levert. Last game on the slate... Oh, uh, late lock, by the way, 7.30. So uh, live stream will start at 6.30. Maybe a little bit later since I won't have a ton to talk about, but we can take questions and everything. Um, Blazers, 110.75 implied total is second. They are four and a half point favorites at home uh, against the Wolves. So Dame is 9,700 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. Um, had a 58-point game a couple nights ago. Went for 60 before the break twice. Uh, I think I showed this two nights ago when the Timberwolves played, but just in case, I'll show it again. Um, I love Dame tonight, and uh, this is a particularly large reason why. Wolves D is 29th percentile overall on the season, won 110 points per possession. Uh, when Jimmy Butler is not on the floor, they are a second percentile defense. They drop by seven points per game. Um, is there totals here? Where's the frequency? So... They give up a ton of threes, um, tons of shots at the rim, but really, they just people make buckets against the Wolves when Jimmy Butler's not on the floor. And in case you're curious, in case you don't know, in case you're just getting to the NBA today, Jimmy Butler's not on the floor. Uh, Dame's a two for me. I love him tonight. I want to have a ton of him. I think that I'm going to have an overwhelmingly large amount of Dragic, Dame Lillard lineups. Uh, as an analog to that, we've got C.J. McCollum. McCollum, 7,200 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. Uh, 36 is sort of the, the threshold for it, and he's only hit that once, uh, which is a little concerning. Um, he's starting to become a guy that doesn't just pop off. Now, he can easily do that tonight. Um, he should be in a great spot to do it, but I would greatly prefer... Dame Lillard, so CJ's a three. Now, Aminu is 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. This game fits him like a glove. Uh, Minnesota gives up a ton of corner threes. Um, that is Aminu's bread and butter. If you think that he has the ability to get a hot hand like I do, uh, he had a game with 32. He had a game with 35. Those are both, um, you know, great performances out of someone at that particular salary level. He's a three for me because there's only so much upside in a in an Aminu game, but it's hard to find a matchup much better for him, especially when his price is sub five. Uh, Mo Harkless, he's sort of like the the less interesting version of Aminu. Um, everything I just said about Harkless fit, or everything I just said about Aminu fits Harkless just to a lesser degree, he just doesn't shoot threes as much, uh, but same sort of style. He just gets to the rack a little bit more. Um, but had the ability, you know, got up to 33 a couple nights ago. When it comes in bunches, it comes in bunches. He's a four for me again. You know, he's only 4,100, so you can't go too crazy. And then uh, we'll have Nurkic. 
Nurkic, 7,400 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. So 37 is going to be that baseline. Um, you know, two games into the 40s, he had the 53-point game uh, a couple games before the break. I don't have a ton of fear of Minnesota at center. Where does Nurkic show up here? So six duds, actually, against Minnesota. Uh, they've been a little bit better on D against centers, which surprises me a little bit more. Um, seeing those numbers, seeing the price, I don't I don't like Nurkic as much as I thought on first glance. Um, I think he's relatively safe from uh, a cash perspective, but I think I can only say that he's a three. Uh, that's probably it. We'll finish up with Minnesota. So the Wolves have a 106.25 implied total. It's seventh. Um, not a great matchup for them. Again, they are not very good with Jimmy Butler off the floor. Wiggins is 6,900, 6,700 on DK. 35 is the baseline. He hasn't touched that number at all, whether it's with Butler or without Butler. Uh, in the past three weeks. Um, only saving grace for him is the amount of times he shoots in the mid-range. Uh, but you're going to need Andrew Wiggins to take 20 shots to sort of be happy. Six big games have happened against the Blazers. Only one monster. Uh, they don't really give up a ton of duds. It's just sort of is what it is. It seems like the perfect, you know, like Wiggins scores 30 game. Uh, fantasy points, not real points, although kind of the same thing. Uh, Wiggins is a 4. I just don't like it. Towns is 10-3, 9-6 on DraftKings. So, you know, 50 is the goal. He had just under 60 um, a couple nights ago, so he's coming in on a lot of rest. Had a 58-point game and a 65-point game right before the break. So the upside is there. Um, nothing crazy in terms of good games or bad games against Portland. Uh, I do like the idea. Like I would expect Towns to be a bad matchup for, well, who guards Towns on Portland? It's probably not Nurkic, right? So he's been very bad against Portland this year. Um, NBA box score matchup. I should probably bookmark this. New stats. Yeah, I should I should probably save this so I don't have to Google it like a moron every morning. So when was that last game? That was January twenty fourth. Who guarded Towns? Well, who played minutes for Minnesota? Nurkic only played 20 minutes. We saw a couple extra minutes of Ed Davis, which is going to make me think that Ed Davis guarded Towns more often. Which makes me think that Ed Davis might be a bit more in play than I gave him credit for. So Towns had... Oh, it's Aminu. Interesting. So Aminu guarded... Towns for 45 possessions. Nurkic doesn't go anywhere near him. Okay. Man, if Carl Towns... If it, if Aminu is guarding Carl Towns, he should not be shooting three threes. The team played well against them when Aminu was guarding Towns, but you know, you got to figure Towns... Or Aminu's happy with that performance. Did Taj go crazy? So Taj got a steady diet at Nurkic. Five of eight from the field. How did Taj do in these games? Is Taj the sneaky recipient of benefit against Portland? Nope. Not at all. Okay. 
It doesn't seem like this is a good matchup for Towns. Um, he's a three. Uh, I, you know, I prefer the up. He has shown the ability to go off, whereas Wiggins has been not showing that ability. So that's what separates it from me and puts Towns at a three. Teague, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. I mean, you need 38 or 39. He got to 42 and 50 in his last two games, uh, a couple 42s prior to the break. Um, where do we see Teague pop up here? Towards the bottom, nine duds against Portland for point guards. That is surprising. It's pretty much just a steady diet of Dame. Um, it's just not filling up the sheet like you would expect. I'm going to say Teague's a four. Can't see really having a bunch of them. B Jelly is 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. 30 is the goal. Uh, had 36 in his last one. Hard to judge anything else there, but I think he does have the ability to fill up the stat sheet. Problem is, uh, Portland does limit threes a little bit. Uh, where does Bielitsa fill out here? Okay, so he's 12th. Eight big games, three monsters against Portland. Um, five duds, though, so pretty boom bust. I would stick to uh, GPPs for Bielitsa, call it a three. And then Taj and, um, and Crawford. Those games for Taj earlier make me a little concerned. 6,400 means 32 is the goal. Uh, it was at 44 right before the break, but I can't say that he's any more than a 4. And then Jamal. Let's see. 4,400, so 22. Not much upside there. He's going to need to take a ton of shots to be there, so I'm going to say that it's a 4. Weird night, guys. Weird, weird, weird night. So let's um, let's see what we've got here. Let's change that to ten. That should be a four one change all. Go. Yeah, ton of Richardson, ton of Wade, ton of Dragic, ton of LeBron, ton of Aminu. All of that makes perfect sense to me. Um, I don't see many alternatives in that. Uh, it seems like by default I need to... You know, I like these guys the most, so let's just say Richardson and LeBron. Um, that pulls Willie Cauley-Stein out, which I think is interesting. Um... So that's going to make me go straight to Embiid. Uh, which makes me lose Dame. Yeah, value is going to be tricky. I would say Aminu would be my spot to focus if I were throwing this into a GPP. And then, man, probably Olenek maybe. This is going to be one of those nights where I'm happy that I'm throwing a bunch of bullets in. We'll dump it in DK and see what we get. Uh, so yeah, I'll be live tonight around 6.30. Um, and I'll be around most of the day for updates and stuff. I don't expect a ton of crazy news. You know, it's a four-game slate. Can't get too wild. So let's do this. Yeah, surprise, surprise, a ton of Isaiah, but that 5,100 price point is just always so enticing for someone with his, in, what is in theory, his upside. Uh, I need to change that. Let's try that again. 
There we go. So, DK. Embiid, Lillard, Cauley, Stein, and Richardson are my faves. So I think I grab Richardson first. I would want Dame second. Um, what's the Willie Cauley Stein lineup look like? I'll tell you what, that one would be unique. I don't really like the idea of Randall. I'm gonna have to take a closer look at Willie Cauley Stein because he doesn't seem to be popping up from a data perspective. Take that for data. Whew. Yeah, D I think DK is going to be tricky. There's just too many options, and I think LeBron is too expensive to really focus on him. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, thank you, guys. You guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, check out Reddit, follow me on Twitter, and uh, I'll see you guys um, in like 11 hours or whatever. Have a good one.